My name is Chris Gethin, and what I aim to bring to you is inspiration, motivation from clients, everything that will allow you to evolve as a human being. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Chris Gethin podcast. Now, we are in a very special place with a very special person, and that is Upgrade Labs here in Meridian, Idaho, of all places. But I'm very, very happy because I'm a local, and now I get to access this place all the time. Dave Asprey, congratulations on the launch of your new Upgrade Labs here in uh, Meridian. Thanks, Chris. This is our first franchise in the U.S. opening, and we've got uh, more than a dozen more coming on the heels of this across the country, across Canada. This has been something I've worked on for eight years. This is the world's first biohacking facility, and people have come in and tried to sort of say, well, what, what are they doing? But what we've been doing is gathering data for eight years about what works for who under what conditions. And so now we've got the ability, when you come in, like we tell you what to do and we do it with science instead of, uh, what do you want? You know, I don't know what I want. And this is a big problem in the world of biohacking now. So we write the prescription for you so you know what to do. Right, okay. And one of the things I thought was fascinating when I read uh, Smarter Not Harder, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, is uh, we talk about our bio biology. Our biology over millions of years has basically created us to be lazy. You know, yeah. we try to be efficient as possible and preserve energy and only use it when needed. Now, unfortunately, that's gone to the extreme where technology has allowed us to be a little bit lazier. But you've got technology here that creates efficiently efficiency based on the data that someone gains when they come in. Mm -hmm. So you were just showing me the little bit of data that you've got yourself here. Sure. So if you don't mind going through that, so people have a better understanding of, OK, if I'm to come into a facility like this, what is the first step that I take and how is it taken from there? All right. When you come into Upgrade Labs, and this is the one here in Meridian, uh, and like I said, they're opening all over the place, but we're going to put you on our cell health analysis and it's going to give you some information, stuff that you almost would expect to get at a doctor's office, but this is your data. It's not medical data. We're just using medical grade equipment to gather. How's your body doing? So for instance, this says that I am 8.6% body fat. I just did this right before the show. Uh, and it says that my visceral fat, this is the dangerous fat you can't see around your organs. It's off the bottom of the chart for someone in my age group. And it, it would be for an 18 year old below, like below average. And you want it as low as you can get. So I have almost no visceral fat, which is unheard of. Cause as you age, you get more of it, which means my longevity program, my upgrade labs is working. It also is showing that my body fat mass is 17.4 pounds. I do Upgrade Labs workouts about 20 minutes a week. That's my total workout. Now, you're more jacked than I am. How many hours a week do you spend in the gym? Five hours. Five hours, 20 minutes. So I could put more time in, right? And I could get more results. But as it is, according to these numbers, what, with the BMI here, it says I'm at the very upper limit of acceptable body mass index. So if you're listening to this, you probably had your doctor tell you about your BMI. This is a ridiculous 1970s way of measuring fitness. And according to this, you and I are both obese. I'm definitely obese. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a big problem here. Or anytime someone tells you to look at your BMI and to do anything on it, that person is not competent. And you need to fire them and get someone more competent. I'm not kidding. If your doctor says BMI, everything that comes after that is garbage. So if you're a doctor listening to the show, guys, there are lots of ways of measuring body fat. That is not one of them because this man is not unhealthy. And this man is not unhealthy, yet we both have high BMIs. So we don't use that as a measure here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, as, it's kind of uh, irrelevant as uh, the food pyramid. Oh, yeah. There you go. And something else here that you wouldn't see at a typical gym is we're looking at down here a measure of the electrical efficiency of your cells. And so we're actually running a tiny current, you can't feel it, through to see how good your cells are at resisting or at storing energy. And that's a core measure of how well your body's doing. So based on that, if you come in and say, look, I want to put on muscle, we've got the gear that'll put it on three to five times faster than lifting stuff because you're fighting against an AI system. But you're not ready to do that if you're inflamed and your cells can't make electricity. Mm -hmm. So we may have to get you back up to restored so that then we can have you put on the muscle. So the fact that your goal is muscle, but if you're blown out when you come in, it doesn't matter if you work hard. What you want to do is the thing that's going to allow you to create results. And since every person is unique when they come in and we can see how unique you, you are as soon as you walk in the door with the cell health analysis. And then what's your goal? So 
you and I might say, oh, we want some muscle mass. Someone else wants cardio. Our cardio system here is a modified form of rehit. And what that means is that three five minute sessions a week outperform an hour a day of spin class. But I'm guessing your five hours a week aren't spin classes, Chris? No. No, no, yeah. If I'm getting ready for, sometimes I'll get ready for like an Ironman triathlon. Mm -hmm. So my training changes a sure. little bit then. Why would you do an Ironman triathlon? Is this a form of self-hate or what? Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, a little bit like that. It's definitely sacrifice <laughs> before the success. You know, I, a lot of people ask me about, hey, should I do it? Look, if an Ironman or a marathon is going to let you prove something to yourself, I absolutely support that. You need to recover mm -hmm. and eat like a professional athlete when you do that. Uh, so you don't get injuries, you don't create long-term joint damage mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and I, I totally support that. But doing it as a way to get healthier, most long-term, like long-distance cardio guys who do it all the time, they do not have healthy joints. They're in pain all the time. Testosterone levels drop yeah, big it, time. Yeah, it's rough. Whenever I've done it, I've done it in a more efficient way where I've done like a lot of HIIT training. Sometimes like on a Sunday, then I'll get going long and slow because I have to have time in the Saturday yeah. and stuff like that. But it's a very short interval. And remember, I'm not trying to compete at the top level. I'm just trying to participate here, you know? You know, there was a time a while ago, one of the guys um, who's become a biohacker um, after um, coming to, to my conferences and all, by the way, biohacking conference in a couple of weeks in Orlando, June 22nd, biohackingconference.com. But um, this guy was like, I'm gonna go in keto and I'm gonna do an Ironman. Like, don't do it. It's going to shred your biology. So of course, goes and does it and huge inflammatory markers, just jacked up blood work. And so you got to be careful. Like this is an extreme stress on the body. I like your approach to it. And, and you, Chris, you talked about the laziness principle. This is the least popular thing I'm ever going to say on your show, but I, I got to say it. So I know how to work hard. Like I've built giant companies. I've lost hundred pounds, like all that kind of stuff. I don't actually want to work hard, right? If you could get all of the results you're getting in the gym right now in one minute, would you want to be able to do that? I probably wouldn't be the perfect person to ask that. No, but I want your answer, yeah. I, I actually like working out. Right. You know, I, 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 it's very therapeutic for me. And I've done it from, a, from quite a young age. But the majority of the people that I work with, right. they would want to do it in one minute. If you could get the results in one minute and then just do more for fun, you would do that. Oh, for sure. Right, because sure. that way if you want to take a week off, you could. Yeah. Right, so this drive to get more results with less effort, like, oh, that's good, that's efficient. Well, that's actually lazy, right? Because someone was so lazy, you know, I was digging this hole and it took a long time to dig with a stick, so I made a shovel. And then that guy's like, you know, this sucks. I'm gonna get a plow and an ox or whatever. And eventually we have tractors and dynamite, right? All of these are because we're lazy. Like we're, as a species, your cells are wired to use less electricity to get it done so you don't starve to death. So all of us, when, when it's time to go to the gym, even though you, you, know, you like going to the gym, do you feel resistance sometimes when it's time to start a workout? You know how to overcome it. Oh yeah, for sure. Th that's your body's internal system saying, you know what, don't do it. And it makes using energy feel harder than it is. And it makes saving energy look sexier than it is. So you're like, okay, Cheesecake Factory, and a sofa or the gym immediately before your brain even thinks like, man, that cheesecake and you're pulled in that direction. Right. And then the gym, you know, to push yourself in that direction. Once you get there, you're going to click it. Yeah. Well, what if you could use that knowledge that your body is inherently lazy, even though you have willpower and you turned it around and used it to hack your body. That that's what the laziness principle is. It's, Instead of feeling guilt and shame because your coaches, your parents, your teachers, everyone's like, don't be lazy. Dude, your meat is lazy. If you're not in there, it's lazy. It's an inherent part of us. So instead of being guilty about our core nature, we can say, all right, I recognize that. I manage against it. And there's one group of people who's figured this out better than any, any others. It's advertisers. Now, you ever... I don't know, have a family member go to the store where they're selling shoes or handbags and they come back and say, look, I saved $300 on this handbag. Yeah, right here. Oh, yeah, right here. I wasn't gonna point <laughs> fingers, right? How many times have you ever said how much you spent instead of how much you saved? I just did. You just did today? <laughs> yeah. Right. So the, most people though, marketers have figured out that your body looks, it makes saving look bigger than it actually is. Mm. It's an illusion that your body does to make you want to lay on that couch and eat that cheesecake. So 
if saving feels bigger than this, the way you motivate yourself to go to the gym is not, I'm going to go to the gym and lift. You say, I'm going to go to the gym and save a half hour. And then the, your operating system's like, you're going to save a half hour. Yeah, that's really awesome. So suddenly the resistance you feel to go to the gym, the resistance melts away. It's like, I'm going to go save time at the gym instead of I'm going to go work hard at the gym because working hard sucks. We, we want it cognitively to be something that's good, but our guts do not want us to work hard. Mm. So why are we going to try and motivate ourselves with something our gut hates? No. And that's the whole gist behind Upgrade Labs. You come in like, oh, well, your, our cardio is oh, about 12 times more efficient per minute. It's about the same amount of time as brushing your teeth every week. You can put muscle on three to, time, three to five times faster. And, you know, people who come here are probably not going to look like you because you do all sorts of weird compound movements. We're going to get the muscles that give you metabolic activity, the big muscles, the ones that get the most return on investment. And you can also go to the gym, mm -hmm. right? We're just going to get them to grow quickly. And then there's all the recovery stuff. And we'll train your brain with neurofeedback. So with the time you save on cardio, we'll make your brain work better so you can pay more attention or you can be nicer to your family. And I just feel like I was always too busy in Silicon Valley. I weighed 300 pounds, losing 100 pounds. I spent 702 hours in the gym to write this book. This is the one that just came out, Smarter, Not Harder. And in that 702 hours, it was 90 minutes a day, six days a week for 18 months straight. I never miss, I just skipped Sundays. I never missed one day. And in all that time, I never lost a pound. I could max out all the machines except for two. The shoulder press has always got me. But all that time, still at a 46 inch waist. So what I had at the end was lower testosterone probably because I was overtrained mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of frustration. And I was at Carl's Jr. I'm like, all my friends, they're thin, they don't work out. They're eating Western bacon cheeseburgers and fries and I'm having the, the chicken salad with no dressing, oh, and no chicken, because calories, right? You know, I got to be on low calories, I got to try this. And this book, Smarter Not Harder, is my revenge for that. Right. So I could have done what I, what I didn't achieve in 700 hours of working out. I could have done it in 40 hours at Upgrade Labs. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess because, you know, you were probably overtraining in way too much of a calorie deficit and inflamed, I assume, so. Terribly inflamed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's say a scenario, someone like me who loves working out, yep. but I go onto one of the machines that you got there, like the ARC trainer or whatever, and I'm able to put in a session there, but I'm assuming it's once for 15 minutes. Can I still combine that with traditional weight training or would this tell me if I could or not, if I'd lead to overtraining or not? You can combine it with traditional weight training, but I'm going to suggest you don't hit the same muscles. Right. Okay. So what you Got do is, is you come in here and you're going to hit the big muscles. And they're going to really grow quickly, but there's a bunch of, of things like, like we don't have a tricep movement here, right? Because we're not doing bodybuilding. It's just the right? multi. Yeah. yeah we're just we're doing just the glutes, quads, you know, uh, a row and a press. Yeah. Right. And these get the biggest muscle groups. So you get the most metabolic activity. It increases your basal metabolic rate and things like that. Okay. And then uh, suddenly like, oh, wow, uh, this works. They also increase bone density in a way that you don't get from lifting heavy weights. Okay. You might from lifting really heavy, but most people listening, unless they're really into it, they're not going to lift the amount of weight that flexes bones to create bone morphogenic protein and things like that. Right. And a lot of this works on negative, And that's where a lot of the growth becomes. Like Dorian Yates, six times Mr. Olympia, was very, very conscious of the negative portion of yeah. the repetition, knowing that's where the majority of the growth is going to come. It's funny you mentioned Dorian. I interviewed him on my show a while back. And, uh, or no, I'm thinking of uh, uh, Frank, Frank Zane. Frank Zane. Yeah, Frank I listened Zane. to that. That was a great, yeah. good interview. Yeah, it was amazing. The same thing, he was talking about how his recovery was so important. And so here at Upgrade Labs, we actually put on the recovery tech, things like cryo, which you don't want to do right after a workout because studies show that cold therapy reduces your ability to build muscle if you do it right after. So I want to see you do cold first. Yeah. So you get the cold benefits, you get the uh, cell danger response, and then you lift, you get more results, right? But you could do that right after you work out if you can recover quickly. The other big thing that I teach in Smarter Not Harder, which is a basis for Upgrade Labs, is called the slope of the curve biology. And what it means is that we like to think, because it's easy, that the amount of work we do is what gets stuff done, because it kind of feels like that. Like, the longer you shovel, the bigger the hole, right? But it turns out for training any system in the body, it's the speed that you can load a system and the speed that you unload it that drives adaptation. So what that means is that if you can pick up really, really, really heavy things and you can fully load the muscle from the first time, you, you, from the very edge of the movement all the way to the very end of the movement, if it's fully loaded at maximum, you're draining glycogen more quickly. 
And now the body says, wow, that must be a real emergency. And then as soon as you finish doing that, if you flip into recovery and allow your heart rate to drop very quickly, what that does is it tells the body, oh, a tiger almost ate me. You know, there's a, 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 a very abrupt stress on the body. And then all of a sudden I'm at peace again. And if when you return to homeostasis and you return to calmness, there's enough minerals, there's enough protein and enough energy, which may include carbs, it usually does, magically the body will adapt very quickly. But if instead you lift and you go, well, I must not have got away, let's lift some more. Let's lift some more. Let's lift some more, right? What you're, in, what you're doing there is you're saying, I'm gonna get less response later because the body thinks there might still be a, a, a threat and you're lacking likely protein or minerals. So if you have enough protein, you have enough minerals and you have enough testosterone, obviously, you can do these movements against here an AI system, um, we call it the chi machine. And then what ends up happening there is you loaded yourself more quickly and then you flipped over into recovery tech. So then you put on way more muscle per minute. Interesting. Okay. And when you say recovery tech, are you talking about like the big squeeze? Or? We've got the big squeeze, we've got PEMF, and we've got um, a brand new, very advanced uh, red light bed called the Red Charger. And there's a whole bunch of like knockoff red light stuff out there. This is very frequency specific. Um, it, it's, it's not something that you're likely to come across. Right. And all of these drive the body. Even neurofeedback is a recovery tech. Uh, and we've got uh, the brain upgrade here which is based on 40 years of Zen, my neuroscience company. So the idea here is anything we can do to help the cells have more energy, that's calming, or to help them relax, to help the vagal nerves relax, that's calming. So stimulus, relaxation, in the presence of minerals and protein equals rapid growth. Right, okay. And before we go into minerals, I just want to talk about like the re-hit that yeah. you, you've spoken about in the book. Now I'm assuming looking at the, like the, the bikes that you have there, that would be a form of rehit, correct? Yeah. So we use a, a modified uh, commercially available bike uh, where there's some custom algorithmic stuff in them. And um, it's integrated with our, uh, our entire system here so that we're getting data from that as part of your whole picture of what you're doing. But what rehit does is it loads the body very quickly for 20 seconds and then guides you with AI to do very specific breathing exercises to more quickly lower your heart rate. And the studies there are showing exactly that. Three five minute sessions, and each five minute session has two 20 second difficult times. The rest of it is just boring, right? So it's like brushing your teeth. The same amount of time you spend every week brushing your teeth is about 15 minutes. And when you do that, you're getting 12% improvement in cardiovascular output, which is equal to about two years of additional lifespan in 15 minutes a week. But if instead you're like, more is better, I'm gonna work harder, not smarter, you're gonna put on spandex that's probably full of BPA, you're gonna go to the spin class where the air is recycled and smells like old sweat, and someone's gonna play like Katy Perry and then yell at you, and you're gonna stand up and pedal so everyone else in the class doesn't make fun of you. So it's like a shame-based, sweaty um, experience that some people love because of camaraderie. But if you love camaraderie, you could have just gone for a hike the, the sad thing is that the spin classes and the aggressive cardio and the stair steppers and the treadmills and all that, they only improve you by 2%. What I'm offering you in 15 minutes improves you by 12%. It's six times better and you didn't have to put on spandex. <laughs> it just seems like a good deal. Would you still like me in spandex? Okay, I'm going to have to come here in spandex. And... Uh, there you go. Hey, you know, if the spandex <laughs> is for romantic reasons, I, I'm down for that. Yeah. You know. Okay, well, maybe not after I've come out of the cryotherapy. Okay, uh, but that's for another conversation. But um, I just want to move on to one thing that I found fascinating in the book is about minerals. Because yeah. one thing, like I come from a bodybuilding background, it wasn't until 2014 when I was diagnosed with mold toxicity where I started really going down the rabbit hole of what I was consuming. Good I was God, consuming right? what I thought was healthy, not really understanding the differences between like uh, wild caught fish or grass fed uh, meats, et cetera, organic, et cetera, et cetera. Then I really started going down the rabbit hole of not only macronutrients, but micronutrients. And one thing that I do suggest to a lot of my clients, especially the ones that are in humid countries is that make sure that you look after your minerals, you know, make sure that you have a good account of minerals in your body. But the one thing that I found interesting that can actually bind these minerals. So and like basically rid your body of these essential minerals is phytic acid. Uh -huh. Yes, chapter, was it chapter two or three of Smarter Not Harder? Yeah. Let, let's talk about that. So I, I, I used to be, when I was in the gym, like, like the, the experience I had to let me write Smarter Not Harder, 
uh, I was into to, to bodybuilding, into weightlifting. I was just trying to lose that weight, right? It never got the shred, but at least I had some muscles underneath all the flab. And I remember reading this book by uh, Rob Fagan called Natural Hormonal Enhancement. It was the late, late 90s. It was one of the first like natural bodybuilding books talking about that. And I started getting into all the health stuff and I realized the bodybuilding stuff was all full of colors and flavors and artificial sweeteners and just a bunch of garbage mm -hmm. that actually isn't good for you that's counterproductive. Because if you want to put on muscle, you need to make enough electricity. And why would you take something that inhibits mitochondrial function when you're trying to put on muscle? It doesn't make sense. I always say that it's so weird as part of the health and fitness industry when it actually takes away from your health. Yeah, fitness, does, fitness can be healthy, but it doesn't have to be. So one of the things that bodybuilders just love that drives me insane is oats. Oats are full of phytic acid. So if you go back to the Bulletproof Diet, the, the orange book, the, the book, people lost a couple million pounds of fat on that diet. It's, it's an international bestseller. And in that book, um, I talk about, in the first chapter, lectins, which are a type of irritant found in plant foods. I talk about phytic acid. I talk about mold toxins in food. I talk about omega-6s in food. And I talk about histamine in food. And these are the five things that trash almost everyone. You eat a meal, you don't feel good the next day. It was one of those. You got to figure out which ones you're sensitive to and then cut them out but you don't feel phytic acid at first. You can eat something full of phytic acid, you won't notice anything. But what it's doing is it's pulling zinc and calcium and other minerals out of your body. So you could be you know, looking to lift heavy and have strong bones and you eat a bunch of oats because you needed some carbs. It doesn't work like that because even oat milk has phytic acid in it and it's pulling minerals from your bones. So the thing I've learned over the course of you know, 20 years of, of creating that biohacking movement and just working with millions of people if you don't have minerals, you can put any signal you want into the body and the body won't respond. So you can lift really, really, really heavy if you don't have enough zinc to make testosterone. You don't have enough boron to make stronger bones. Your body wanted to adapt. You told it to adapt. It couldn't adapt. So guess what happens to a body that wants to adapt and can't adapt? It gets stressed. It gets anxiety. And then your performance goes down. So you're eating a bunch of oats because you heard you needed carbs. Dude, eat white rice. Mm. It's the same amount of carbs but it doesn't have phytic acid so, in it. So people could have like cream of rice. Absolutely, it's as just their breakfast, fine. yeah. Right, so you're same amount of carbs. One had toxins, the other one didn't. Now, if you're starving, should you eat oats? Well, yes, in fact, oats are called gruel. That's peasant food. That's what the rich people would feed the peasants to keep them alive so the rich people could eat whatever the heck steaks they could get, right? We're in a world where beef is relatively affordable and it's still a superfood, always has been, no matter how much big agriculture companies try to tell you to eat soybeans, anyone who's lifted ever knows that soy protein is a joke, mm -hmm. right? So we didn't have to go down, down that rat hole. But I will just tell you, if you don't have minerals, you can meditate. Your meditation doesn't work right because your brain wanted to make neurotransmitters and it didn't have what it took, so it couldn't do it. So if you just pay attention to stop robbing minerals by eating phytic acid and then you add minerals back in. And there's two things that I just, I'm telling everyone in Smarter Not Harder, they're the least sexy of all the supplements I've ever talked about. I've developed cool new nootropics and mitochondrial energizers and all these things, but this is what everybody needs to start with. The first one, I'm going to call it Minerals 101. This is made by Upgrade Labs, or Subgrade Labs. This is a combination of macro minerals. If you take this every day, your body has enough minerals. Even if you did eat a couple bites of oatmeal, if you eat a bucket a day, you're screwed anyway. <laughs> so you got to be able to absorb your minerals. But getting your macro minerals doesn't work unless you take vitamin Dake. That's vitamin D-A-K-E.com if you guys want to check it out. By the way, it won't change my life if you do or don't buy this. The reason I make vitamin Dake is it is less than 20 bucks a month. And if you take vitamin D without vitamin K and vitamin A, it actually can cause calcium to go in places where you don't want it to go in the mm -hmm. body. So it can calcify yeah. in your body. Yeah, so this is actually very, very affordable. It's the right formulas and the right ratios. So vitamin Dake.com. The fat-soluble vitamins tell the minerals where to go inside the cells inside the body. So if you take minerals 101 and you don't have vitamin D, it doesn't work because the body doesn't know where to put it. If you have enough vitamin D, A, and K, and a little bit of E, E controls only two of the minerals, but if you have that, then this combination means enough minerals in the right places at the right time. So when you lift or when you meditate, when you do anything to improve yourself, you have the resources you need to do it. And this works for grandparents and this works in the gym. It doesn't matter. This is like foundational, fundamental biohacking for everyone. And then after you get the macro minerals and the dake, and there's one more thing you need to get, and that's the trace minerals. And that's why Danger Coffee 
which is my new coffee brand after um, no longer being with Bulletproof. Uh, so I'm still a, a shareholder in Bulletproof, but I have no, uh, I have no visibility or control into whatever they're doing. So Danger Coffee, lab tested, mold free. By the way, it says on the label mold free. You should check whether the coffee that you used to drink says mold on the label. Some of the brands that were mold free don't say mold free anymore. And it's also full of trace minerals. And trace minerals are not the same as macro minerals. These come from humic and fulvic complexes. And what these do is these fill in the little gaps where your body needed just a tiny bit of these minerals. This is what you would get if plant-based minerals actually absorbed, which they don't. Right. Okay. Got it. And is there a benefit of actually having it with coffee? Because I know you basically, uh, you, you, you actually introduced the world to bulletproof coffee where, you know, you have some MCT with it, you have uh, some grass fed butter with it, and it does give you an amazing boost. Well, try, try it with danger coffee. Okay. It's All right. different. Even black danger coffee gives you the boost because of the presence of the minerals. There's a system in your body that's invisible to your conscious brain that makes you want more or less of a food. And the, the natural flavorings and the, the big chemical companies have learned how to hack that. But when you drink danger coffee, there's electrolytes and trace minerals. And the part of your body that needs minerals is like, I don't know what that is, but keep drinking it. And you just get this mm. desire to drink it. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. If you add butter and MCT, you get more of that. But the coffee itself is different. When you heat up the trace minerals, they more effectively bind to toxins. And also you do it every day. So a lot of times you're going to open another bottle. You're going to put a cap full of whatever. No, just... It's always in your coffee. The more coffee you drink, the more minerals you get. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now I'm going to jump ship a little bit here because I'm looking at the glasses that are in front of me. And we spoke briefly before the start of the podcast because obviously a large portion of my demographic are into working out. Okay. And you told me there's some great benefits to people, especially if they're working out in a harsh lighting environment by wearing the glasses. Okay. Can you give us the 101 on that? Thing? Yes. All right. So True Dark is my circadian biology company. And I'm wearing the glasses during the day. These true darks block some blue light, but not all blue light. If you're wearing blue blockers during the day, you're trashing your circadian biology, and they don't work very well at night. And the reason for that is there's three other colors of light that also ruin your sleep that aren't blue. So these are daytime glasses for indoor lighting. But when I first launched these guys, these are the, uh, the true dark glasses, the, the ones that are the least sexy of all of them. They, I kind of look like Cyclops now. You look like you can run really fast with those. Up. Nice. Try this on. This will go with the, the nice. tram lines. What, what, what your brain does when you put them on there? Oh, wow. You, you feel a bit of a chill pill? In yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So uh, wake me up when we're at the end of this podcast. Nice. <laughs> they will knock out. If you run for 10 minutes, you're going to want to go to sleep. I use those for jet lag. I don't get jet lag anyway on the planet. But we did studies at 40 Years of Zen, my neuroscience company. And we found that 15 minutes of wearing these puts your brain in an advanced meditation state. Just wearing these, the change in the color of lights, think of them like noise-canceling headphones for your eyes. Well, do you know Charles Poliquin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. So rest you did? Yeah, recipes. One of my books is dedicated to Charles. So he was a good friend. And, be, and I sent him some of his glasses when I first made them eight or nine years ago. And he called me up all excited. He goes, Dave, I had some of my athletes test out. He goes, they're getting 4 to 6% higher... PRs. So they're actually hitting new weight levels because they're wearing these. And the reason for this is that when you have, this is a very specific tent. These aren't just red. There's multiple gradients in these. Uh, I actually filed a patent on it. And what's going on is your brain feels, how calm you are right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So your brain calms down. So right now, this is all invisible to us, but it's how it works. All the light, all the shapes, all the everything that's coming in, all the sounds, they take a certain amount of electricity to pre-process before you even see them. So the body says, oh, let's ignore that, ignore that, ignore that. But it takes energy to do that. Well, we just lowered the amount of input going into your brain, which means your brain has more energy available for other things, mm. like proprioception, like focused effort, like willpower. And so what I find over and over, if you really need to go all in, noise-canceling headphones and the true dark glasses, which are noise-canceling headphones for your eyes, basically, Put those on, ideally with a baseball hat to block even more of the light coming in above, which is more stressful for your brain. Do that and load up some extra, uh, some extra plates on the rack and see what happens. And you actually can be stronger by lowering the wasted energy in your brain. Interesting. Charles taught me that. Okay. All right. I'm definitely going to give that a shot. I'll, I'll give you so, some true darks. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So you would actually basically wear like the yellow lens during the day in you know, yeah. at any, any, any other sort of environment. However, when it comes to like, say, working out yep. or like you're on a plane, for instance, 
changing time zones, that's when these bad boys will go up. For changing time zones, or if you're working out and you want to go real heavy. When I work out, I usually wear the daytime ones. Because you'll get tired if you wear those. I mean, like, you probably already feel a little bit drugged. I feel, I feel chilled out. Yeah. Yeah, I feel so good. If you're getting a headache, too, you put those on, and within five minutes, it's just the brain chills out. But if you're going to go, like, really, really push as hard as you can, you put those on, it's going to chill your brain so you can put more into your body. Right. And I'll work out in, in these, which are the, the daytime ones, and I'll do that with the baseball hat if I'm going to go to a place with uh, normal lighting. Okay. Great tip. Thank you. So... We're going to be finishing off here soon, but I did get a couple of questions from uh, nice. a post that I put out there a little bit earlier. And someone asked, can you ask Dave, what is the biggest biohacking mistruth that you'd like to bunk? You know, it's, it's about working hard. The reality is that if you have to work hard at something, you're not very good at it. Now, if you choose to work hard at it, because you love it, that's recreation, mm. right? But so many of us are caught up in this idea that, well, you have to struggle and you have to suffer. Sometimes that's the only way, and then you do it, right? Because if you are a good human being, whether you're a man or a woman, when circumstances call for it, you can bring it at full power, right? If your biology works anyway at full power, you bring it at the fullest power you can. Yeah. But if you believe you have to bring it at full power and you have to struggle and you have to suffer to get results, that is bad programming because you probably don't. Mm -hmm. And if you like struggling and suffering, then find the most fun way to struggle and suffer recreationally. Mm -hmm. And that's okay too. Yeah. But what I don't want people to believe is that, well, I just have to work hard. It's just going to hurt. Maybe for a little while, but that's probably because you suck at it. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. You know, like I, I am very different to a lot of my clients that I work with because a lot of people have never picked up a weight or maybe they were in shape when they were in college and now they got married, had kids. And a lot of them are fighting against the uphill yeah. stream because they're like, oh, do I have to do this? Well, I'm like, you came to me. Yeah. But of course, if there's an easier, more efficient way for them to do it, they're going to take it. And, and you see, so you're doing it for joy because I, I love it. Yeah, I love right? it. And I, I absolutely respect that. And when you do it, you're not usually actually suffering and struggling. No. You're working hard, but it's working hard in a way that brings you like endorphins. And mm -hmm. it's a happy feeling, right? Yeah. So there are some people who are like, well, that doesn't happen. Right. But they're willing to just continue struggling over and over. Oh, weight loss. I thought it was supposed to be hard to lose weight. I'm never hungry. I, I'm actually trying to gain weight right now. Right. And it's a, it's work to gain weight. This is from a guy who's obese and autoimmune and had all, has all this history of, of issues like yeah, that, that you'd believe would have a slow metabolism. Yeah. Right. And so there's all these beliefs we have. And most of them revolve around how hard it's going to be when you have achieved mastery. And when we have enough technology, nothing is supposed to be hard. If it's hard, it's because we haven't fixed it yet. And, and that should be your mindset. Just understand if it's hard, we can do better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've got one more question here. And this is actually coming from uh, my wife, Sunshine here, because she's following like a top travel blogger, correct me if I'm wrong, who has millions of followers, but now she's decided she's, gonna, she's a biohacker instead. And basically what she's doing was just fasting. Anything else? Just started with fasting and that's pretty much it. Yeah. So what makes a biohacker? Ah, well, when I first wrote the definition, it's the art and science of changing the environment around us and inside of us so that we have more control of our own biology. And so one of the big signals going into your body is nutrient timing and composition. So when did you eat and what did you eat? That's the easiest thing to manipulate. So this is entry level biohacking. That's why I wrote a big book on, on intermittent fasting. Because it turns out most people, especially women, over fast when they start intermittent fasting. And see, men and women will hit the fasting wall. And women hit it first. When women over fast, the first thing that happens is they start losing sleep quality. You wake up and you just didn't get a good night's sleep. And if you're tracking it, you notice it in your numbers. And then you keep going. And then suddenly your monthly cycle, it doesn't work the way it normally does. And then you keep going and then your hair starts getting thin. Like, what is going on here? Well, it's you over fasted, just like over training. And then with men, we have something similar. First, our sleep goes away. Then we wake up without a kickstand. And then after that, we start getting thinning hair. So what's going on is you need to fast based on how you exercised, how you slept and your other stress levels, because fasting is a stressor. It's a good one. And when I see 
women using fasting as their first biohack, I love it because it's so accessible. But I would suggest read the chapter in Fast This Way, which is the chapter specific to all the studies done on fasting for women um, in my big fasting book. Because having been one of the first authors to talk about intermittent fasting in the Bulletproof Diet, and this was you know, 10 years ago when I came out with this, and millions of people have done this. And exactly, when you overdo it because you're excited, you're going to, it's going to happen. It happens over and over. So I wrote the fasting book specifically around that. So you are a biohacker if you do nutrient timing, but you also can control the color and type and timing of light. You can also control whether your body thinks you're being hunted because you had to work really hard. That's called exercising. So the cells in your body are pretty dumb. It's like, I don't know why, but he made me work really hard. It must have been something trying to eat me. I guess I should get ready for the next time it comes. This is your body adapting without any of your conscious awareness of it doing that. And then there's so many other things like seeing faces is relaxing. Physical touch is relaxing. So being conscious of these things and then changing them to get the results you want, that makes you a biohacker. So you can be into meditation and breath work and cold therapy, and that's all you do, like Wim Hof. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, he's a buddy. He's been on my stage at the biohacking conference and I love his work and he's a biohacker, but I don't think he does red light therapy. You don't have to do everything. You just be become aware that you can change a variable in your life and watch your body change without any effort at all. And fasting. Heck yeah. I like it that she's doing that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad that I did get mold toxicity so I could actually yeah. go down this rabbit hole and be, you know, and discover this, this other world. It, of longevity. Yeah, it teaches us a lot because once you get over the molds, I had really bad mold and I'm going to plug, it's, it's a free thing, but moldymovie.com. This is the documentary on toxic mold that I did. It's, it's just a gift. If your doctor thinks you don't have mold, show them that documentary. If your wife or your husband thinks you don't have mold, show them the documentary. It's there. It's free, moldymovie.com. Because I got gaslit. I go to the doctor. I feel like I've been poisoned. I'm so tired. I feel like I'm hungover. And he's like, oh, this is another guy trying to get Adderall to go to work to get an MBA. I'm like, no, it's not that, man. I don't want Adderall. I hate that stuff. You know, I, I was on it for six weeks and maybe want to punch people. Never again, right? So um, mold is a big thing, but once it breaks your mitochondria a little bit and then you, you understand detoxing, you understand energetics, and then it's a major gift. I mean, look at you now. You had this big mold exposure. You're in amazing shape. Your brain works again. You got your biology back and that lets you teach other people. Yeah, that, yeah. that was the main thing is getting my brain back because I was desperate there for a while. I was like, I'm just not myself. Yeah. I'm definitely not myself. And I went to see so many doctors and it wasn't until I got referred to uh, Dr. Spinag in Oldsmar, Florida, where first day, 62 blood tests, hair follicles, saliva, stool, urine, everything, brain scan. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to dissect and diagnose. And then I had a long, long road ahead of me, but I'm so glad that I did. Imagine if you hadn't. The odds of you yeah. having MS, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, all that stuff, because you didn't treat toxic mold, it, it's one of the things that can turn your life sideways. And if you don't treat it, it can be permanent. Yeah. Like I remember hearing, I think on one of your podcasts where you said like you did a talk somewhere and you could smell there was mold there. You knew it straight away. So <laughs> you can actually tell it's there pretty much. And I, I'm pretty much the same way. Go into a hotel room, you can pretty much figure it out. Uh, but anyway... I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you ever so much, Dave. I want to congratulate you, Haley, as, as well, on the launch of this phenomenal uh, place. It's been, a, it's been a great day. It, it's here in Meridian, and this is the first franchise. And if you're listening and you're not here in Meridian, you can get your own franchise as well. Own and upgrade labs.com. Uh, in the meantime, because I know a lot of your listeners are here, guys, come on in. Do the cell health analysis. We'll look at your cells. And we'll just, uh, we'll just tell you how you're doing. In fact, are these, is this something that, that is like an introductory thing? Like if people come in, you'll just give them a complimentary one. Yeah. All right, guys. So the owners, just because I twisted their arm in public, just said, if you come in to upgrade labs in Meridian, they will give you a cell health analysis like the one I just used right here to see where the fat is in your body, where the muscles are. So thanks for coming here and checking it out and letting people know about it. This is something I'm really, really happy about. No, of course, it's absolutely phenomenal. We're absolutely honored to have something like this in our vicinity so we can take advantage of it. So we'll be back a lot more often. But thank you very much, uh, Dave. And if anybody should have any questions or where they want to find you, where should they go? Go to DaveAsprey.com. That's the easiest place. There's a big podcast called The Human Upgrade. You can find me there as well. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for listening my name is Chris Gethin and I am out.